in a family of teachers. Um, my mother was a teacher, my aunts and my uncles were teachers, and when I was little, my favorite, favorite thing to do was to play school. I loved to be the teacher. I would take all the kids in the neighborhood and I would force them down in my basement and we would play school. And my favorite present I think ever was a blackboard. <laughs> That's my first day of school. <laughs> and I think um, if you hear that about me, that I come from a background of teachers and that I play, like to play school, you would think that it's a no-brainer that I'm standing here before you as a mathematics teacher and I've taught math for the last 10 years. And the reality is that's so far from the truth. I took a very, very different path. And I think the path that I took that made me a mathematics teacher today influences the way that I teach, and I hope it's in a very positive way, and I want to share that with you. One of the things that fascinates me about teaching, and about uh, people in general, is all of the money and um, effort we put in to studying whether somebody um, is the way they are because of nature or nurture, right? Why, you know, is it genetics? Is it the year we were born? Um, and what I find so fascinating is, to me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Because I have no influence on the nature part of the equation. All I can do is nurture. Um, one of the things that I do know is that I don't know what my parents' background was in mathematics. And I'll step back for a minute and tell you this. One of the most frustrating things that I hear a parent say to me is they'll come to me and a lot of times they'll say this in front of their son or daughter. And you can fill in your own subject area here, but they'll say, I know my son, he's so bad at math. But it's okay, because I was bad at math too. <laughs> <laughs> They've shot themselves in both feet. You just shot the nature and the nurture. You're saying you don't have the brains, and I'm not going to support you. We've talked about this before. Lie to your kids. Tell them you were good. It doesn't matter. It's not like we're running around saying, oh, I was so promiscuous. I'm sure he will be too. So I don't know if he was a great mathematician or if he would have majored in history or English or something along those lines. Um, my mother, on the other hand, was an elementary school teacher. What she did for me and my father, too, is they just affirmed everything I did. Whether it was piano, spelling, ballet, basketball, mathematics, as long as I was trying, that was okay. They never said, we think you're good at this. They never said, we think you're bad at this. And that's what influenced me. In third grade, I got the privilege of learning my times tables. You didn't get to learn it in second grade, and you had to know it by fourth grade. But it wasn't that I had to learn it. I got to learn it. I also got to learn cursive in third grade, and that to me was huge. I was finally mature enough to understand the concept. I didn't get to learn long division until I entered fourth grade. And when I got to do long division, I was so excited because I was finally ready because I'd reached a certain age. And I, I embraced that idea of, of getting to do it as opposed to having to do it. Fast forward to high school, I think we, oh, still. <laughs> Fast forward to high school. Um, 10th grade, I had a geometry teacher, Mr. Alexander. I loved Mr. Alexander, not because I loved geometry, but because every Friday morning, in geometry class, we would talk about what happened on Hill Street Blues the night before. <laughs> and I loved that, and I wanted to be a good student. I wanted Mr. Alexander to like me because I had something in common with him. And I take that with me into the classroom today. I want to know about my students so that I can make that connection. I graduated from high school. I didn't have honors in mathematics. I actually had honors, I think, in PE and some drafting course that I did. Um, on the university, 
And then I graduated from university. And what really got me at university was when I entered uh, the university, I had to take a placement exam. In the States, yeah, they, they give you a test when you first arrive. Which English class will you be in? Which math class will you be in? I tested into calculus. So I thought, okay, that's where I'm supposed to be. And I went home that night and met with my new friends, and we were talking about what courses they placed in. And for the most part, they placed into pre-algebra and algebra. And it's the first time ever that I can remember saying, hey, maybe I'm good at this. Maybe this is something I'm capable of doing. And so what I continued to do was just take math classes. I didn't do it because I wanted a degree in mathematics. I just did it because I needed to get a minor in something, and I wanted a degree in philosophy. So I'm here to tell you my first degree was in philosophy. And I'm here to tell you there are not many jobs in Tucson, Arizona for philosophers. <laughs> decided I wanted to make money. I didn't want to be a teacher. I didn't want to follow in my aunt and uncle's paths. I didn't want to follow in my mother's paths. I wanted to be different, and I wanted to make money, and that's when I decided to become an actuary. And that's when I decided to move to LA and start working in the insurance industry. And that's when I moved into the cubicle in the office. And that's when I went to school when it was, or it's not school, but I went to work when it was dark, and I came home when it was dark. And as you know, in the United States, you get very little vacation time. So I went to that cubicle, and I went to that cubicle, and I went to that cubicle. And I pushed those papers, and I worked with some fabulous, fascinating people. And I, I love the idea of um, auto insurance in California. It's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, I realized, after doing that for 10 years, I wasn't affecting people the way I wanted to. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be that Mr. Alexander. I wanted to be that Miss Sanders that let me learn my times table in third grade. And that's what I tried to take with me after I graduated when I went to my first school. I've been teaching now for 10 years, and I love what I do. And I hope that my students know that my ultimate goal for them is not that they learn the quadratic equation. I know we want that. Um, not that they understand vectors, I know we want that too, but that they know that I care about them as individuals. And it's taking those three minutes at the beginning of class every day to talk to those kids and find out what they did over the weekend. It's stopping them in the halls and asking them how their lunch is or what they're doing and really trying to get to know our students. That's, to me, what teaching is about. If I'm <coughs> successful in doing that, then eventually and hopefully they will get the curriculum that I'm trying to deliver. Thanks for letting me share.